What's going on guys? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your additional supplemental video for lesson number five, the patch bay and signal flow. In our last video, we covered how the patch bay works, but in this video, what we're going to do is we're gonna really going to focus on how to connect the patch bay. So let's go ahead and begin. So most basic patch bays have 24 ins and 24 outs in the front and back. This is what's called a 48 point patch bay. It has 96 jacks in total. With all these ins and outs, things can get kind of confusing, even for professionals. So it's important that you follow a few basic rules to keep things organized in your mind. Rule number one, the top jacks are always outputs. What this means is that you take the outputs of your audio interface and other gear and plug that into the top jacks on that patch bay. Rule number two, the bottom jacks always go into the inputs of your audio interface and to inputs of other outboard gear as well. Rule number three, never connect a front panel output or the top portion of that patch bay to another panel output. Likewise, you would never connect a front panel input, the bottom row, to another front panel input as well. When you look at a patch bay from the front, you should automatically think the top jacks or the A jacks are all outputs and the bottom jacks or all the B jacks are all the inputs. That makes it a lot easier to understand where to connect things. Let's go ahead and talk about how to connect a patch bay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to connect your multi-track recording devices, individual playback outputs to the mixer's input using a snake. Start with the first channel on the console, connecting each multi-track output until you've connected them all. Next, what you want to do is connect the recording area to the next group of inputs on the console using a stage box or a wall mount XLR connector. Next, what you would want to do is connect the direct outputs of these channels to the inputs on the select back of the patch bay, starting with the input on the far left selecting the half normal mode on the patch bay for these connections. Next, what you would want to do is connect the rear outputs of the patch bay to the inputs of the multi-track device. And then finally, what you would do is you would connect each subgroup output on the back of the mixing console to a rear input of the patch bay, and then configure these channels in a parallel mode. All right, guys, and so those are the basics behind how to connect the patch bay and how patch bay works. All right, guys, that's all the information that I have for you today, but of course, it's up to you to put this knowledge to use. Now, don't forget to jump back into your Recording Connection workbook and just double check to see if you have any mandatory supplemental reading assignments to turn in for this week. Now, if you feel shaky on any of this material, what you need to do is go back into your provided textbook and reread that material. Just remember that these videos are only a supplement to your education, okay? Now, if you're watching this video online and you want to know more about the recording process, uh, and you want to learn how to become a recording engineer in just six months, what you need to do is you need to check out the recordingconnection.com or call the provided number. Our staff is actually going to set you up with an engineer in your town or in a town near you. We have tons of locations all across the U.S. and parts of Canada, and we're actually really proud to say that we have more than a 72% higher success rate thanks to our student advisor that comes with your enrollment. So hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later.